you approved this back in the 90s. At, at that point in time, why did you approve it? Why did you give the green light and feel so confident about the procedure? Well, to put it in a nutshell, of course, it wasn't just myself. There was a, a regulatory team in which I was one of the leaders. Uh, essentially, um, our focus was on making sure there wasn't a loss of visual acuity. Uh, and as a consequence, we didn't pay enough attention, although we did uh, pay some attention, to other uh, problems that occur when you um, slice the cornea and then take a p some tissue out of it. So it's uh, not a, a concern about the loss of best corrective visual acuity. It's a concern about not being able to get rid of your glasses and your contact lenses. That's only about 38, uh, I mean, only about 60% are able to do that. And in addition, you have these glare halos, night driving problems, even if you happen to have um, reasonably good visual acuity. So the focus became, if you'll excuse the, the, the expression, was on the visual acuity parameters. Okay, Stephen, why don't you go ahead and respond to that? Because, you know, you helped perform the first surgery. Uh, other doctors come to you now even to get this surgery done. You still believe in it. Um, what do you think about what, what Morris is saying now? Well, um, good morning. And I was there from the start. And what Morris is saying today is simply wrong, that the science is not there. LASIK is uh, arguably the most studied elective procedure that we have today in the United States. Uh, since that original FDA approval, more than 28 other protocols, extensions of LASIK, uh, different eczema lasers have been approved through the FDA. That represents over 16,000 eyes that have been extensively studied, not just for loss of best corrected vision, but specifically for what Morris is talking about, glare, halos, even night driving simulations. Uh, some 17 million patients have had this done in the United States alone. It's approved in every country in the world. All branches of our military have approved it, as well as our astronauts. Some 300 peer-reviewed studies have been done on LASIK alone. The science is there that shows that LASIK is safe and effective, which, by the way, importantly, is precisely what the FDA's position is today, that it is safe and effective. So, Morris, what has changed your mind? You mentioned um, a, a bit of that uh, in your first answer, but what is it that is so concerning to you where you are even telling people that you care about, don't do it? Well, I think it's straightforward, actually, and I, I heartily disagree with uh, Steve, uh, and I, I respect him a great deal. I have reviewed, uh, there certainly has been a great deal of uh, research by refractive uh, LASIK surgeons on the topic. I have reviewed the uh, uh, PMAs, the data that was um, partly of which I had reviewed when I was at the agency, and looked at specifically at those tables that, re that relate to haze and, get and, and halo and uh, night driving problems. Uh, and despite uh, Dr. Slade's comments, it is, these problems are, are persistent. They remain. I looked specifically at whether they remained after a year, and they do. I've heard from many, many patients who call me, uh, and this started about three years ago. I had put LASIK uh, issues behind me, uh, was working on many, many other products. Um, there's the failure rate, if you actually calculate a failure rate based on FDA data, and you can see it from the charts I sent to CNN, the failure rate is over 50%. That includes taking into account that only 60% can get rid of their glasses and contact lenses, 18% or more suffer from glare, halo, dry eyes, and similar problems, and in addition, uh, People have a very small percent, but um, uh, maybe less than 1%, maybe about 0.7, 0.8% that have a, a, a problem with the cornea is too thin and it bulges. This is a serious problem requiring a corneal transplant or hard contact lenses. People are having a miserable time with LASIK. Now, doctor, uh, it took me. Go ahead, two, I'm sorry. To th go ahead. No, go ahead, finish, Morris. I'm it sorry. It took me two to three years to. It, it took me two to three years to figure out that I was wrong. 
to uh, discount the, uh, the haze and halo and other effects. These have not been ex studied extensively. They are, they are being, and when they are studied, they're studied by people who have a financial interest in the outcome. Uh, and uh, there, there's not an independent study that's been done. And, and in fact, the, one of the big problems is that in the military, some of the, the ophthalmologists who have been responsible for the military adopting these issues have a side business in which they conduct, uh, they perform LASIK surgery. And so they've profited mightily by this. Uh, so it's being promoted heavily as if it's nothing like getting your fingernails manicured or your hair curled. It is not. It's a serious problem. You're taking a perfectly formed cornea, messing it up by making it, taking a slice, putting a flap over. If you add up all the risks associated with that and, and add in a few incompetent surgeons, you have a lot, a lot of problems. I would like to point out that I do disagree with um, everything Morris, just about everything he just said. Uh, I don't believe that the uh, military doctors who did the treatments there are and prove that it's LASIK actually has better night driving after LASIK than before LASIK. Um, I, I don't think that they are um, compromised or um, disreputable. But let, let me address your question because you actually touch on the most important thing and that, are the, that, that is the patients. And these are our patients. There are, as ophthalmologists, these are all our patients that have had problems with LASIK. And that's the most important thing there is. And we will do everything in our um, capabilities medically to help them. And we are doing that. Morris, some of the data he put out was from 20-year-old technology. The first FDA approval was in 1995, based upon, uh, at 99, based upon machines that were now 20 years old. Since then, uh, for example, we don't slice the cornea, as Morris said. We use a laser to make a flap and lift that up. We use much more sophisticated ablation patterns than we did with 20-year-old technology. Think about what your laptop or your cell phone looked like 20 years ago. The patients that have had problems with older forms of LASIK or even other forms of refractive surgery, again, are our focus, and we will do everything for them that we possibly can. New drugs have been developed for dry eyes, new screening techniques. Morris uh, misrepresented the rate of ectasia in this country. We now can screen for that and it's far lower. 